Okay, um, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm gonna tell you today about the tormented journey of an app, Open Data Editor. So, um, before starting, let me quickly introduce myself. I'm Sara Petty, I'm the International uh, Network Project and Community Lead at Open Knowledge Foundation. Big love for the digital commons, I'm based in Bologna, Italy, and here are some ways you can contact me via email, X, uh, or GitHub. Now, before we deep dive into the tournament journey, I wanted to just give you a very quick explanation of what Open Data Editor is. So, some of you may have heard of the application already. We also gave a presentation last year at the CSV conference in Buenos Aires about Open Data Editor because at the time we released it as an alpha in so April 2023. Open Data Editor is basically a desktop application, easy to use, and its aim is really to maximize data and metadata interoperability. What we want to allow with this application is basically for people to um, be able to do data management without the use of code, and therefore it is actually optimized for non-technical people. So when we started developing it, we had in mind small organizations, municipalities, the glam sector, the global majority, and so on. So as I said, the application was released in April last year as an alpha. It has been released as a beta in uh, October 2023, and now we're working towards a stable release which will happen at the end of this year. So what is the superpower of Open Data Editor? This is a bit of a joke, but I wanted to make sure that everyone knows that basically it uses frictionless data under the hood. And I'm saying this because the application is kind of new, but it's actually based on decades of experience that we have at Open Knowledge Foundation around uh, basically data portability and data publishing. So Open Data Ed um, frictionless data, just in a nutshell, is basically an open source toolkit for data interoperability. It has data and metadata standards and software implementation of it being an open source software that has been around for more than 10 years, it has a strong and solid community around it of very expert and technical people. And keep this in mind because it's going to come up later. So what does Open Data Editor look like? At the moment, it looks a bit like this. It's going to be better, I swear, for the stable release at the, end, uh, at the end of the year. And its main functionalities is basically, as I said, it's a desktop application, so it has it's not on the cloud. All your data set are stored locally. There's no vendor lock-in. And as you can see, some of the functionalities that you have, you can basically generate metadata for your data set. And you can also validate your data and generate a validation report like the one that you see at the bottom right. Now, it seems like some, everything was very easy, but actually it has not been a straightforward path. And this is really what I want to concentrate on today. Because I think that most of the times, unfortunately, failure is not visible. And we always, always only talk about the success stories. But the truth is, actually, failure is natural and normal. And in progress for technology, but also in progress in anything, in any aspect of your life, actually, failure is as part of it as success stories are. And I think that if we started to talk more about the failures and the mistakes that we make, there's a lot that we can learn from them. And, of course, it's difficult because there's this strong pressure from our capitalistic societies about, you know, power and status and prestige always comes from success stories and failure is really considered unacceptable. Um, and therefore, we have this kind of like selective communication about what we do. And we only, only basically communicate success stories about our products, our projects, and our everyday life, actually. But, Enough talking about capitalistic pressure. If you want to talk about that, meet me later for coffee, or even better, maybe tonight at the reception for a beer. Um, and basically, this is what I want to talk about to you today. So for the next 10 minutes, you're going to hear about our failures and our mistakes. And if you want to hear about the success stories, I encourage you to, um, to subscribe to our newsletter or go and have a look at the blog <laughs> instead. <laughs> and um, yeah, so without further ado, let's sink in the tormented journey. So one thing that I wanted to clarify is that this was actually not our first attempt at having an application that allowed people to access some of the frictionless functionalities. So in 2018, we published, um, we released a web application called trygoodtables.io that was mainly doing data validation. Now, the application was out for a while and quite quickly we had big concerns around data privacy because the data was going in the cloud and of course we had a problem of hosting. Um, so when we started ideating Open Data Editor and developing it, we already knew from those mistakes that those was not no things that we wanted to do again. And so that's why we chose to do a desktop application which would keep everything locally and would allow you to access all those functionalities even offline if necessary. 
Despite that, we still had some other bumps on the road, of course. Um, so the first thing that I want to talk about today is the target audience. So as I said before, this application was, is really aimed at not technical audience, which is not the communities that we generally talk about at Open Knowledge Foundation. So as I mentioned before, we have this very strong frictionless community. We're part of the CCAN community as well. And those are all very proactive and very expert communities, but they're made of very technological people and very expert people. And so the mistake that we did is, it's not that we didn't talk at all to non-technical people. This is something that I want to make clear. For example, last year in Buenos Aires, we went out and talked, for example, to the art local glam communities, to archivists, but it was not an iterative communication. Um, and the thing is, it was just natural for us at the time to just turn back to our usual communities. And so basically, instead of continuing the interaction with the target community, we started interacting with our technical communities. Which also meant that when we released the alpha, for example, we didn't think about the fact that maybe it was not a good idea to have an alpha that had to be downloaded with um, a few common lines. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so that meant, of course, that we had even fewer interactions because at that moment, the people that were giving us feedback were the usual people we always talk to. Um, something else that I wanted to mention, and this, I mean, all of this, of course, comes from great intentions. Um, we had a lot of great ideas. As I mentioned, we have been working with the frictionless uh, community for a very long time and with, uh, on issues of data publishing and data portability, so we had a lot of great ideas. When we started this application, there was a lot that we wanted to put in. But maybe it was too much also for the beta release, and the outcome was that actually the application, when it came out, it was a bit bumpy, even more than what it would have been if we just had focused on a few issues uh, only. And then the last thing, but I'm going to tell you more about that, is the seductive AI, which can be problematic and complicated, but we didn't think about it at the time. So yeah, these are basically some of the bumps that we had. Um, and now what I'm going to tell you about is the main takeaways. So audience, of course, was a kind of like the biggest bump that we had. And so basically, once we understood that, and we could understand that with a bit of perspective. So one thing that I want to say also is, as I said previously as well, it's perfectly normal to make mistakes. And sometimes you need that space in time as well to see those, those mistakes. So one thing that I would definitely advise is use a lot of your time on user research. We were very lucky to hire a very good product owner who has actually spent a lot of time doing the user research with the right. Uh, audience, so she identified the real audience, and then basically another advice is try to build a relationship with them um, because you want to understand their problem, but you also want to iterate ideas with them because sometimes the solutions that you come up with are not exactly solutions, but are adding actually more problems uh, for some specific communities. And then something else, especially if you're thinking about um, developing applications for non-technical um, people, don't underestimate the user experience, as we did. <laughs> um, the other thing, the other main takeaway is try to be driven as much as possible by simplicity, utility, and pragmatism. And I'm saying this because this has been our motto uh, with the Frictionless Data Project. Try to be less disruptive as possible. Try to start from a simple idea. Start from what you know, because that's going to be the easier to develop. A, then go one step at a time and especially don't try to reinvent the wheel. So what we don't want to do with this application is just come out with yet another application that does data validation, but we would really want to add an extra mile to it uh, because otherwise there's no sense in developing it. The other things that I wanted to mention as main takeaways is um, technology has moved at the speed of light since the beginning of tabulation, but the problems that people that work with data are facing have not moved of one inch. Data is still messy. People spend a lot of time scraping for non-machine readable data, the infamous PDF everyone knows about in this room. And we are spending a lot of time validating and cleaning the data, even more actually than what we're using to analyze the data. And then, as promised before, um, one other main takeaway is try as much as possible not to be charmed by the latest tech trend. It's easy to fall into that. Um, and for us, for example, we wanted to build uh, an AI plugin in the beginning to generate reports and help people, but we were surprised by the fact that um, people were actually very skeptical for the same reason they didn't like our web application before, because they had concerns around data privacy. And so one thing 
we're still probably we're still developing an AI plugin right now, but what it is going to be about, it's uh, going to be an extra sort of like textual description on top of metadata and schema for non-technical people, and it's going to be generated without sharing the data, but just sharing the metadata and the schema. Main takeaway is try to build a brilliant team uh, behind the projects that you're doing. So here uh, I was just wanted to quickly introduce them. So we have Evgeny Karev, who's the senior developer and open data editor creator. We have Romina Coleman, who's the brilliant product owner that I was talking about before. Myself, project and community manager. And then we have Gergana Cechkova, who's our other senior developer. And then we have Patricio Del Bocca, who's our tech lead at Open Knowledge Foundation, standing right there. So if you have <laughs> technical questions about open data editor, I definitely encourage you to go and have a chat with him later. So what's happening now? Basically, uh, at the end of last year, despite all the mistakes and the failures that I just talked about, we attracted actually the funding, um, the attention of a generous fund, the McGovern Foundation, who believed in the idea that we had, and basically gave us some funding that will allow us to, as I mentioned before, um, work towards a, um, a stable release of the application by December 2024. But on top of that, because we are trying also to learn from our mistakes, what we want to do is also to um, use this funding to build a solid relationship with our target communities through pilots. And then we also want to develop a corpus of training material, including tutorials, online training, workshop, and all of that, uh, with really in mind the idea to increase and simplify adoption. That's it. Uh, so before we jump into questions, I wanted to ask you if you could help us uh, with uh, um, three minutes form. Uh, just to, I, I just have a few questions to ask uh, you what you would find useful and not useful about an application like this one. Um, so if you could take some time, there's a li the link also there. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you very much uh, for coming with me on this tormented journey. Uh, here I've put a way to um, explore Open Data Editor. That's the website and the GitHub repository. Frictionless Data Project, again, website and GitHub repository. I definitely encourage you to go and have a look at the other fantastic projects we're doing at Open Knowledge Foundation. And you can also follow us on X, uh, at OKFN and Frictionless Data. And again, I'm Sara Petty, and this is a way that you can contact me via email or X. But yeah, if you have any questions, I'm here. Could you talk a bit more about the use cases that you're seeing with early adopters? Yeah, thank you for your question. Um, so uh, at the moment, the user research have mainly target uh, the journalist community. So, uh, and we tried also to, I mean, of course, and we wrote a blog about it uh, as well. Um, the user research is anyhow going to be biased in the sense we're not going to talk to everybody anyhow. But we try to target the journalist community, um, especially people coming from Latin America. Actually, this kind of reminds me of what we're building too with QSV Pro. We're trying to address the same audience. And, and yeah, um, yeah, I think we, we would love to share learnings and lessons. I'm sure everything is open source, right? So yeah, maybe perhaps there could be a space for, for, for collaboration because we're, we're trying to address the same audience. But you know, as with open source, we were scratching an itch because we kept encountering the problem in the field. And we just, as engineers, we said, okay, let's, we'll build something. <laughs> and, but sometimes it's better to collaborate rather than reinvent the wheel. Thank you. If there's no other questions, I think we can let you guys walk over to the keynotes now. Um, so we'll ba walk back to where we were this morning um, for the first keynote. Thank you so much.